So as a part of our early morning strategy, we're going to get a tip up going first and foremost because that way we're fishing while we're getting set up. So what I've done is I've come over here and I've identified the top of the hump. And I'm going to soak a tip up on the top of the hump while we go around and drill more holes and get set up and start fishing and jigging around. So this tip up is pretty cool. It's got a light inside it, which is another great thing about this early morning or evening thing. So I'm gonna tighten that light and when it goes erect and vertical like that, a light will flash. And if you turn it like that, it stays off. So what we're gonna do is attach that to the tip up like so. So when the flag pops up, the light engages. So I got my minnow bucket right here next to my tip up, which we just set up. I'm gonna pull a bait puck out and I'm just gonna fill that with a couple minnows. That way I always got minnows with me. And for the most part, I'm just fishing with the head anyway, so I don't really need to keep them alive. So I'm just gonna grab a handful of minnows. I prefer fat heads for this just because they have a little bit smaller body profile. And there, those minnows just go in the puck like that. These minnows stay alive and fresh. And these minnows go in my pocket. now. Nice mark. Come on. Oh, keep away. Come on. There's two fish. One below that fish. See who wants it more. Here we go. This one's getting interested. Yeah, he's got. There we go. First fish of the morning. Beautiful. It's so nice when you get two fish on the screen. One of them is going to want to eat. The other one, you know, it's a fight for survival. Okay, we got this fish right here. That's a good boxer, that's a good cutter. There's another one down there and so I'm a little more eager to see who's, who's actually down there. And we'll see if we get into them really good. Maybe I'll keep some, but that's a good warm up fish. I got two fish down there right now. I'm going to reach into my pocket, grab my bait puck, put on another minnow head and get back down there. I'm out here fishing today on this hump and I haven't noticed any sign of perch yet. Usually you're battling perch for a little bit, or in this case, this is the morning. You might have a good morning window where you catch some walleyes, and then it's just perch that come in and take over. But I haven't noticed any perch activity, and I'm actually fishing a fair ways off bottom because smelting ciscos tend to suspend. Another reason why I picked this structure is because it's got access to deep water. Behind me is some pretty deep water, and that's where these fish are gonna roam. And um, along with this, you know, the reason I picked this spot and the fact that these fish are keen in on smelt, I'm going with a smelt colored bait, which is gonna be your purples and your blues. So this is a blue tingler spoon, a little flake on it, and I've tipped it with a fathead head just for a little enticement on there. This happens to be a light action rod, but um, looks can be deceiving because a light rod from one manufacturer to another is quite a bit different. So for me, just feeling this rod, it might be a light, but it actually is really conducive to a lot of the spoon sizes that I fish. So it might be more on the stiffer side of a light, which is something that I like when I'm dealing with walleyes of this size. And then today I'm just using six pound monofilament. Just a super hassle free way to go out and fish, you know. Braid's gonna give you a hard time sometimes because it tends to freeze up, but I've been interrupted by a fish here. There's two of them again. Let's see, Let's see who wants to get real here. The bottom one's looking pretty real. Oh yeah, he's, he's looking real. That's a good one. There we go. I love it. He just zoomed past the other one. There's still two down there. This is what early ice is all about, especially when these fish are keying on, on schooling fish like smelting Cisco's, man. They just pick them off when they can. There's a decent fish there. Nice. All right, see, that's what I'm saying. We might be getting into some little better sized fish. That's why I didn't keep that first one. The other one would have been a totally acceptable eater, but this one's got a little more meat on the bones, so. And again, I gotta hurry up and get back down there because there's three fish down there. There's still two down there right now. I got my minnow head on the spoon, so let's ice that one and get right back down there. 
All right, so I'm just getting down here right now. You can see my bait just entered my zoom screen. There's a fish right there, still hanging out. He looks like he's recognized my bait. He's coming at me slowly but surely here. Just gonna get his attention. Maybe I'll dip down a little lower to him. Shake it in his face. There, he's kind of noticed me. Oh yeah, he's coming with the thunder now. And I'm gonna pull it away from him since he didn't commit. There we go, he smacked it. Little cat and mouse. Wonder, this feels kind of weird. I wonder what this is. I wonder if this is a walleye. It's kind of shaky. Oh yeah. Another nice plump boxer. Oh man, there's another one down there. See, early ice like this, everybody's so gung-ho to get out here because the lake is just alive. It's just nuts, you know? Like, in, in all honesty, you know, the Cisco's and the whitefish and such, like I've said numerous times tonight already, they spawn late in the fall and even under the ice. And so if you can get out here as early as possible, all the predator fish are still keen in on those fish because they're readily accessible. I'll take out my pliers here. Bam! All right, there's another one. Good morning. And I don't have to run over to the minnow bucket because, like I said, I got my puck. I'm going to grab another head off there, tip it. And then, since I'm not in a real hurry, those fish that we were marking a second ago have kind of gone away. I'm going to take the time to glow my spoon a little bit. So I've oriented myself on this piece of structure. Like I said, I've identified the top. That's the first thing I want to do is find the shallowest piece on the structure. So I've gone up, found the shallowest piece. That's where I've laid my tip up and now I've drilled a couple holes with access to the deeper water. So on the steeper side of this hump. And now I've got deep water behind me, the top is in front of me, the tip up is up there and I've aligned myself within view of that tip up. So I'm always just peering up real quick to check on that tip up. Just a little ruckus down there, I'll often get him, get him turned on. See, I'm not going to shy away from pond and bottom again. I know he's still in the vicinity and I know that's what he liked the first time, so... For some reason that just gets something, see, just, he just showed up again, he was gone, but for some reason that just gets something going in him. Come on, now there's two fish, and again the bottom one's going to come flying up past the second one I've been working. Seems to be how things are going. Oh, come on. Oh yeah, here he comes. He's going to eat. He's gonna bonk it. Oh, there's two fish on me again. Again, I'm gonna play cat and mouse, come a little higher for him and see if that triggers something. It's kind of a mess right now. I got two fish on the screen. I got one above me. I'm usually pretty curious about the marks that are above me because bigger walleyes will often suspend looking for those fish. And then also you get white fish and lake trout, which are a fun little bonus fish. All right, he's not moving too fast on so the pound bottom again. Get a little closer to his nose. He's creeping, just creeping. So this mark just showed up out of nowhere, higher off bottom. And like I said, that's usually a decent, oh here, oh, he's coming fast. Those are usually the more decent fish or sometimes the pelagic species like whitefish and, and lake trout. Oh geez, there's, there's, this, one's, this one's absolutely flying. What is going on here? He just lifted me. Oh, he lifted me. That one came off bottom. I'm messing with another fish. Oh, this is good. And there's still another one down there. That one really didn't want to get in the way. Here we go. Right in the snoot. Another nice cutter. See, these fish seem to be coming in in waves because they'll catch one, mark two at the same time, and then while I'm reeling one up, there's still, there's still two down there, so. Ooh. There we go. Might have to start using tails. There you like that. You freaking like oh he's gonna freaking smoke me. <laughs> oh I love that. He was not cooperating, so I gave him some oh I gave him some really hard hard jig strokes. And that really got him going. Okay, okay, okay. That's fun. Try to steer him away from that transducer cord. And just 
Take your time at the hole. Oh, and there you go. There we go. Maybe I thought it was a little bigger than that, but that's a perfect example. I've marked a couple of fish that, uh, I'm going to let that one go. That one's maybe a little big. I'd marked a couple of fish that were really just not quite eaten. I mean, they'd followed me up about eight feet off bottom and wouldn't commit. So I just changed my jig stroke style and gave it a little bit more aggressive pops. And that triggered that fish into eating. That was fun. Oh, here we go, here we go. Two fish, two fish. He did not like that. I love that. You play keep away with them and they just have to have it. That's hilarious. Another one down there again, so. Keep hitting back real. This is a cutter. I don't have to be so worried about this one. Hello, 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 hello. Gosh dang, they're just the perfect variety of eater. Cha-cha-ching, there we go. Sweet. See, like I'm saying, I mean, if you play keep away with them, they just go, they just go eat for it. That's fun, all right. These minnows like crazy here. See, there's the fish. He's just going back down the bottom. There's my bait. I'm on the zoom screen right now. And two tactics I like to do when they go away from me like that is just go ahead and crash bottom again. See, I crash bottom. He instantly came off. There he is. Just turn on. There we go. It's instant. It's silly how that works. I love that. It just triggers something in them they can't stand. There you go. Reducer. And they're just chowing it. Come on. Fire action. Just like that. Another chunker. Big jig strokes as soon as they get down there, just to see who's in the neighborhood, get some turned on. I'm staring at that tip up, hasn't done anything. Caught five and let a decent one go here. Well, jigging, that just tells me that that's just, they're keying on stuff that's moving fast. You got a live shiner tail hooked on there and a light wire hook, so it's got plenty of liveliness, but doesn't have a whole lot of room to go. So they're obviously wanting to chase. And the faster I get, the faster I bring it away from these fish, the faster they want to crush it. I mean, watch that. That's his nut. Two of them on the screen again. And they, if you want to bring it away from them, that's when they want to eat it. And it's so much fun when they do that. Nice. All right. These are just beautiful, beautiful fish. I mean, they got this, the body build of fish that, that eat high protein, soft bodied bait fish, smelting ciscos. And I'm going to let this one go as well. Oh! Practically lifted. If we can get this guy past the transducer and he makes the cut, I'll have my six. And it will have been a great morning. There we go. Yep. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right. See, and that's the efficiency. Like I said, I stayed up a little bit last night on the couch studying maps, picked out a structure that would give me the highest probability of landing on fish based on where their forage lives, i.e. deep water. And then this is a small piece of structure that I can really cover with just one person in a tip up. The sun's up now, the window's closing for the morning, and uh, I've got lunch and dinner, I think, so. Excellent.